what would you consider a beautiful disaster? Me having to reorganize these movies every single month. Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Food Ton reviewing Beautiful Disaster. So what is this movie about? Pretty simple premise. There's a girl prodigy that used to live in Las Vegas. You can kind of guess why she was in Las Vegas and what kind of prodigy she was. However, she's like, I want to go to a Christian college now. And at that Christian college, she meets a dude that kind of does underground fighting. And now she loses a bet and now has to sleep with him in his apartment for 30 days. And I guess love is going to ensue. However, the trailer didn't tell you what's going to happen in the back half of the movie. So, do you like this film? It could have been way worse. Let's put it that way. Even though that's not really a positive thing to say about the movie, it had some humor. When the fighting scenes were on screen, I was like, okay, that's somewhat competently shot. I've seen a lot worse fight scenes. There's that. But then when it comes to the editing and just her dialogue of the Gen Z-ish dialogue of it, it was very, very fucking annoying. So let's talk about the positives of the movie. There's some humor in it. When we get to meet the T's, and what do I mean by that? The five T brothers, it actually is pretty funny, and I enjoyed that part of the movie. I was like, okay, this is actually funny. That's funny. This whole dynamic of between them and this girl and the father character, it works pretty well. And I'm like, okay, I got some laughs. Also, throughout the story, there are some good laughs in the movie. It's like, okay, that shit funny, that shit funny. That works, that works. So you're like, okay, this is pretty good. Pretty good stuff going on there. And when we do have the fight scenes with kind of the, you know, I want to call it MMA. It's more of just underground boxing. I've seen worse, let's put it that way. There are some scenes where it's like jump cut edits. Here the edits were reasonable where you know where people were at and when people were hit, getting punched. And it seemed like the contact was pretty close to the person's face. It wasn't some way back way shit. You're just like, well, like this. And the story at the third half, third half, the third act of the movie, it did put a little bit interesting twist to it. So I was like, okay, I kind of like what we're doing. And they do this whole subplot with, if you don't know if you're getting, you know, tricked in the first 30 seconds, you'll be the chump. And you're like, okay, I see what we did in that, you know, the last third of the movie. And I kind of appreciate that we decided to go a little bit different on that spectrum and not try to keep it open-ended. However... Some of the dialogue, some of the editing choices, and some of the sex scenes just felt forced. So let's talk about the sex scenes. There's a sex scene in the bathroom, or in a hotel bathroom, in a hotel room. It was forced. It was so forced in how they're trying to say, like, oh, we're going to have a funny sex scene. Everything they try to do goes completely wrong. And with what does go wrong, you go, that's got to be the worst. The worst hotel room on Fremont Street, bar none. What people need to realize in Vegas, Fremont Street and the real strip are kind of not close to each other. So when you show like Bellagio and the Mirage, which is not the Mirage anymore, it's going to turn to the uh, Hard Rock Cafe Hotel. Then you see, like show the Fremont stuff, you're like, that's kind of far away. So I also kind of get annoyed at that if you actually know Vegas. And also, let's talk about some of the editing. It felt like there were scenes where someone's getting punched and they're okay. Are just some editing choices where it's like, and we're going to move to this scene, and we're going to move to this scene. And it's just like the weird transitions. You're like, I feel like that should have transitioned a little bit better. And then let's talk about the dialogue. It's her dialogue that really pissed me off. Half the time in the movie, she's like, you're a coward. You're a coward. You don't talk about your past. You don't talk about past. You're a coward. I hate you. I hate you. But the whole time, she never talks about her past. She has secrets. She's a coward for doing half the shit she does. But no one, like... No one, like, you know, turns the coin on his head and be like, wait a minute, you're the same shit you preaching, you hypocrite double standards bitch. And I can say that because people call her out in the movie, but pigeon, we'll call her a pigeon. You pigeon, you double standards hypocrisy pigeon, where you call everyone a coward and how everything's their fault but not your fault and how. It just, her dialogue was so Gen Z, I'm the victim, and it just, like, just felt very forced, and I was just like, eh. Feels a little gross. Why are you doing this? But beautiful disaster. It could have been a disaster of a film. It could have been a beautiful film. It was neither. It was a serviceable movie that I'm shocked fam events put in theaters. 
Like, I'm truly shocked. This is one of the ones where it's like, I expected to go to Vudu or, you know, maybe a Netflix, maybe a Peacock. But they decided to put it in the theater, so I give them props for doing that. But I can see why it was only for two nights and one night per showing. Or one showing per night. So Beautiful Disaster will receive a 2.5 out of 5 of food taunts, which equals that 50%. Let's see the critics review scores gave this one. So you have critics, one of them, and it is a negative of 2 out of 5. So, you know, 40%. Then we have a 65% with the audience, no critic consensus. So we have the 40, 50, 65. Not shocked. It's all kind of similar. She suck with the blue food taunt. Like, comment, subscribe. I don't think it's Boobtown Topia. you Boobtown is watching a great day. And I don't care if you're watching today, tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now, or a year from now. I love every single freaking one of you. And yeah, maybe I'm just also one of those people where people are like, oh, I want to cuddle. I'm not into that teeny bopper bullshit anymore. It's like, if we're going to do something, let's do it. And, you know, I don't need to, like, hug someone while I'm trying to sleep for eight hours a night. It hurts my shoulder. It really does.